not telling Jacob about this one. Thanks, RJ, and good work. I thought I lost you for a few minutes, but I understand when nature calls. Over. Well, I got lucky. My hypothesis is correct after all. I think it was more than just luck. You did good research. We all did good research. Now all we need to do is plan our geocache and complete our assignment. Let's not congratulate ourselves just yet. RJ said that no one might be able to confirm our hypothesis further. That's true. You don't always know for certain that you're 100% correct. Right, but hopefully they'll be able to help us get closer to the answer. Let's plan our cache and wait for Tony's report from Noah. I'm ready for coordinates. North 37. <laughs> A meeting with Mr. Joe Kunches, who works with NOAA and the Space Environment Center here in Boulder, Colorado. He studies space weather and how to predict it. Hopefully, he can tell us whether there was any solar activity the day we experienced the problem with our GPS. Space weather refers to conditions near the Earth that affect man-made technologies such as satellites and other human activities. That's why it's so important to predict space weather. Right. Satellites were once rare and mostly government owned, but today they are more numerous and many are commercially owned. So that's why it's important to know where and when they may be affected. Right. Satellites are very important in our lives and also a nice addition to a well-balanced portfolio. We heavily depend on satellites for weather information, television, communication, and navigation. We have learned about predicting weather here on Earth, but how do you predict space weather? Predictions are made primarily using data from satellites that monitor the sun. For example, NOAA's GOES and POSE satellites help forecasters know atmospheric conditions at low Earth orbits and higher up. Do you work with NASA satellites as well? Yes, NASA's ACE satellite samples the solar wind and SOHO allows forecasters to see the solar eruptions that cause space weather. Are there other ways to monitor space weather? Yes, we use data from the ground-based observatories run by the United States Air Force as well as the magnetometer network run by the United States Geological Survey. What is a magnetometer? A magnetometer is an instrument that measures the behavior of the Earth's magnetic field and tells forecasters when a magnetic storm is developing. Wow, you have a lot of data to monitor. How do you get it all? We get data through the internet, dedicated telephone lines, and email. We also have our own antennas that receive data. And once you have the data, you have to analyze it. Forecasters continually monitor the space environment to provide short-term, three-day predictions. They don't have daily space weather predictions on the news, so who receives your forecasts? The alerts go to a number of places, such as private and commercial users, as well as other government agencies, such as NASA. Do you send out alerts often? It varies depending on the time of the solar cycle, but usually we average 20 to 30 alerts per week. What's a solar cycle? As you know, the Earth's weather changes over time with different seasons. The sun's weather does too. The changes on the sun are caused by the reversal of its magnetic poles. I didn't realize that the poles of the sun switched. Over an 11 year period, the reversal of the sun's poles completes half of its cycle. During this time, the number of sunspots seen on the surface of the sun goes from high to low and then back again. Sounds intense. Yes, the period with lots of sunspots is intense and is called sunspot maximum. The period with fewer sunspots is called sunspot minimum. So during a sunspot maximum, there would be more solar flares and coronal mass ejections. We would see increased auroras and more disturbances in the ionosphere causing problems with the satellite systems. Good job, I think you have it. But remember that even during a sunspot minimum, there can still be lots of interference. If you don't mind, I have one last question. Sure, what's your question? We're fairly certain that our GPS devices went crazy while we were geocaching due to a solar flare or space weather event that affected the ionosphere. Is there any way we can be sure that was the cause? We can find out if an alert was issued for that date, but not if the storm affected your GPS device. That makes sense. Let's go over to the computer and check out the website. You can find out all about space weather and geomagnetic storms when you visit NOAA's Space Environment Center website. NOAA confirmed that there was an alert while we were geocaching. We can't be certain, but we may have solved another mystery. Of course, I'm sending my report to the Trios detectives. Hopefully, they will get it before they go to pick up Dr. D from the airport. Look, it's Dr. D. Hi, Dr. 
yesterday, we solved our mystery. That's great. Did it have anything to do with batteries? That's funny. Dr. Odenwald mentioned the same thing. We did have a small battery problem, but not with our GPS. Batteries aren't the problem. Remembering to check them can be. Right. To solve our GPS problem, we actually researched electricity, magnetism, phase weather, and auroras. We've learned all about how GPSs work. It's amazing how many new things we can learn while we're trying to find the solution to our problem. I was thinking about your problem as I was watching the auroras in Norway. It appears to me that the same space weather events that influenced the auroras probably also affected your GPS. Tajir why didn't you tell us earlier? We came to the same conclusion. Isn't it more fun to find the solution yourself? You're right, and Tony's report from Colorado finally nailed it down. Dr. Odenwald told us that storms on the sun can affect the ionosphere in ways that slow down the GPS signal so that the receiver reads a false distance. And Tony told us that there had been a space weather advisory the day that we had the problems. But don't worry, Dr. D. We know that that doesn't necessarily mean the storm caused the problem. But it is a very possible solution. Did you consider a multi-path signal error? What's that? It's an inaccuracy caused when the GPS signals bounce off of buildings or large rock surfaces. Well, we weren't around any buildings, and I don't remember seeing any large rocks. I don't mean to alarm you. I really think your explanation is probably the best in this situation. I'm just trying to keep you on your toes. Thanks, Dr. D. Can you tell us about the auroras that you saw? What colors were they? Did they really dance around in the sky? Yes, they did. Let's take one question at a time. The colors of the auroras were absolutely wonderful. Mostly kind of a pale green, a little red along the borders.